Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and we'll continue our uh, Boto 3 course, right? And this would be the second lecture and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Boto 3 to basically interact with the EC2 instances, right? We'll do the same way which we did for AWS CLI. So I'll cover EC2, I'll cover S3 and I'll cover IAM, right? All right, so you can see my terminal. So I'm so I've opened two terminals. Uh, on one side, I'll probably show how you can basically use AWS CLI if you're not sure how to use Boto3, right? So I've just opened it. And on the left side is my Python terminal. So let's quickly import Boto3 and create a client. So I'll just create Boto3.client and I'll connect it to EC2. Right. Uh, within this, you can also provide region profile if you want, if you have specific profile, right? So I don't have multiple profiles and I want to connect to USE. So by default, the region is USE because that is what was set when I were, when I did AWS configure, right? So it uses the same region. All right. So client is created. Uh, let's see if I have any running instances. Let me do C dot describe instances and I don't have any running instances. Cool. So what we're going to do, so we have seen describe, so probably we can uh, basically run an instance using Boto3. Uh, we can start and stop that instance and we can do a describe, right? So to run an instance, I'll probably need an AMI ID, right? So I don't remember an AMI ID. So let me just pause the video and go and get an AMI ID. All right, so I got an AMI ID and I've also got a subnet ID because I think that would also be required, right? So in order to run an instance using Boto3, you need to do C, so C is my client dot, I think it run instances, right? And it, and if I just run it like this, so you can see it tells me about the missing parameter, max count, min count. So these are like required, right? but I'll also provide it with an AMI ID and a subnet ID, okay? So let me clear the screen. And again, let's do image ID. I think it is like this equals, so this would be my image ID. Let's put it here. We'll do subnet ID equals and this would be my subnet and if if you are not sure how am I am putting the subnet id or ami id i mean when you're automating something probably subnet id is something you would get from describe subnet call right so you won't get these i mean you won't be hard coding these subnet ids you probably want your subnet ids to be dynamic right so that's, that's how you would do when you're automating it. But since I'm just going to show you how you can actually launch an instance, uh, this would do. And then it says max count was it? I think it was max count and min count, yeah. So max count would be one and min count would also be one. And if we have not done any mistakes in parameters, this should launch an instance. And yes, so, okay, yeah. So with Boto3, uh, the default instance type is, I think M1 something, M1 small, right? So, and it says that it is not supported in US East availability zone. So nothing, no issues. I'll probably just do, instance type right and that would be equal to t2 dot micro i'm not sure if this is instance type or instance size uh, so let's just run it and see if we run into any errors t2 dot micro okay need to put them in quotes and 
yeah it worked so instance type it is okay so you can see bunch of json has been put uh, out right let me clear the screen and we can make a describe call right like we did and we can see if we have an instance running and you can see the instance has been launched earlier we were not getting any output here but now in the reservations you can see so we have instance type of t2 micro this is the date time when it's launched and uh, subnet id which we gave right and yeah so this is the information which you get right when you do a describe and you can filter filter all these uh, basically uh, information uh, let's let me show you how basically so let me clear the screen and do a describe and i can do filter right and i think that sets uh, hash and then inside this so this is a little confusing for me the syntax basically so the best thing is just uh, refer to the documentation right if you're not sure uh, no i think it's like this filter it's a list and then within this there are curly braces and yeah so now i can do filter like name equal uh, sorry it should be like this name equal instance hyphen type right and value values should be it would be another list and t2 dot micro right uh, i think uh invalid syntax uh equal it won't be an equal it would be a colon my bad all right hmm name filter is not defined okay it's filters damn it and it's like equal to and not yeah so yeah you can see so it's i've just filtered so this is this would be good when you have uh, like many instances running right so say you have just say you have like thousand instances running and out of thousand you have one instance which is running t2 micro so then you can filter that instance out of those thousand instances right so this is where filter actually comes in so okay so that we have covered describe and we have covered uh, run instances now we can also start and stop instances right so again c dot will do then stop instances and if i just run it you can see it will say that it requires instance ids right so instance ids is plural so that would be a list okay so let's just get this from here equal and we'll get the instance id which we have launched where is instance id and i could just filter but let's search and get it subnet id is there state disabled so it is at the very beginning this instance id right so let's just copy it and put it here and you can see it has stopped the instance right so you you can see from here that it's now in stopping state right the instance id so this actually gives you an idea basically for a sort of automation which you can write on your own using lambda functions so when you're writing lambda functions which interact with aws services you have to use boto3 within your lambda function right in the same way like i'm using so say suppose you have like a uh, thousand servers running but uh, during the night time say between uh, 11 o'clock at night till 
five or six in the morning, your servers are not under any load or there's no traffic and you want to stop your instances during that time, right? So you can actually write a Lambda functions which triggers at 11 o'clock in the night, right? And it makes a stop instances call uh, on the instance IDs and instance IDs you can again fetch from the describe call, right? You can do a describe on your all, all the instances and you can fetch the instance IDs, store them in a list and pass this that list as an argument to this, right? And it will it will go and stop all your instances. And similarly, you can actually do and start instances. So I'll just remove stop and make it start. And this is going to start my instance. So my state is pending, right? So this is, uh, I mean, just an idea for an automation. Uh, I mean, people, uh, companies with not so much budget for uh, infrastructure, they actually tend to do that. They stop their instances during night and then they again power them back up in the morning when they come, right? So this is an automation which you can write and actually save a lot of money. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you like the videos, guys. Please do subscribe to the channel. I see a lot of guys watching the videos but not subscribing. So please don't do that. Hit the subscribe button, right? Uh, it gives me a lot of encouragement to create uh, uh, these videos for you and I'm coming up with a lot of uh, stuff uh, in this year, 2022. Right, so please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And yeah, thank you for watching.